Hey there, and welcome back. I am so glad you are here with us today at the Elmwood United Methodist Church. Thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by. I am so grateful. My name is David. I am the pastor here. I bring you another part of our sermon series on the six facts that we should know about God. So today we're going to look at number four, the fact number four, and we'll be getting into that here in just a few moments, and I'll be explaining that to you. But until then, it's a privilege and honor to pray as we uh, prepare for this message, so let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you knowing that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you for your presence in our life and for your healing, for your grace. We pray for those in Ukraine that are experiencing war and conflict right now. We pray for uh, the Russians. We pray for the Ukrainians. We pray for all people caught in, the, in, the, in this conflict and in this mess that is happening. Lord, we pray that you would help those who need that help most, your peace that would breathe, be there and we'd be brought into this land and to these people. Lord, we pray for protection and healing and comfort for those that are mourning and grieving over the loss of a loved one. Lord, we pray for that same for our nation and our world, that we, uh, we trust in you for all things, for you are good to us and kind and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding with steadfast love. We ask now that you open our ears to hear, our eyes to see, our lips to proclaim your praise, and may the words of my mouth, Lord, and the meditations of all who watch this video be acceptable to you. Be acceptable to you, our Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer, for it is in the name of Christ we pray. Amen and amen. All right, well, hold on for our message. Have you ever said something and the moment the words flew from your mouth, you said to yourself, oops. <laughs> to ask the question is to answer it, right? Because we've all done and had those moments where we knew even as the words left our lips, we should have not have said them, am I right? <laughs> we've all know that. But have you ever done something stupid and the moment you did it, you thought to yourself, that was really dumb. The only acceptable answer is yes, because we're all guilty, I think. We've all done and said a whole bunch of things that we knew at the moment or soon thereafter we shouldn't have said or done. But you know, to err is human. Oops and uh-oh are a part of our vocabulary for a reason, right? <laughs> well, today we look at the next of the six facts that we should know about God. Today, we will look at the fact that God wants you to be free. The word of God for today is from the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, chapter 3, verses 20 through 24. It will probably be a very familiar story of Adam and Eve. Here's what God's word says. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. And now may God add his blessing to the reading to the hearing, and to the living out of his word. Amen and amen. You know, I wonder if Eve said, oops, or something worse, after Adam ate the fruit. Clearly, it didn't take long for the world to totally change. From innocent beauty to the world that was suddenly transformed into a very dangerous place. Did Adam say to himself, why did I just stand there? Why didn't I kill that snake? Why did I let Eve talk me into eating this fruit? I'm a fool. He must have had thoughts like that. But it is a fact that 
the words once spoken can never be unspoken, and the deeds done can never be undone. Try as you might, you can't erase the record to, or make the words or deeds disappear. You can say, I'm sorry till the cows come home, but the words that you said and the unkind things you did will still be on record. And even if you cry a river of tears and beg for forgiveness, even if you are forgiven and nothing can ever alter reality, nothing can change what has been said and done. However, it's not always a bad thing for some words once spoken and some deeds uh, done should never be undone. You know, the words and acts of love and kindness should never be undone and forgotten. But sadly, we seem to focus on the negative. Sacrifices made never should be undone and forgotten, but yet we forget those. But let me ask you this. What tree are you living under? The enemy, Satan, is patient. We know that. He exhibits the power of evil that sometimes we believe is stronger than God. The enemy waits for Eve to walk past the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Satan hopes that he can undo the goodness that God created in this world. And that is his job. His job is to steal, kill, and destroy. He is really good at that also. Now we heard God tell Adam that if people eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they will die. That's what Satan wants. He wants life to be wasted away and death to become stronger than, than anything else. And so he waits and his patience pays off. And under the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he beguiles Eve and he casts humanity into the highway of hell by doing that. He makes a mess and sin makes a mess. There's no way to sugarcoat that awful reality. It has been that way ever since the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and there's always consequences for our sinful choices. This is a battle you will face your entire life, and I'm referring to the battle against sin. Now, maybe today some of you feel beat up and ashamed. Some of you might feel sick of fighting the sin in your life, and some of you are just about to give up altogether. And the truth is, all of us are not only guilty of sin, but we are slaves to sin. So we not only need forgiveness, we need freedom. And no matter how powerful sin feels in your life, God's power is greater. Amen? So how can we be free? If God wants to set us free, then how? Well, we get a little clue of that in the next book, of Genesis. In the next book, past Genesis, it's called Exodus. And in Exodus 14, we get a glimpse of God's promise to restore and bring freedom. What we see is God's power to free his people from slavery, slavery as they get to the climax of their story in the crossing of the Red Sea. Before the people cross the Red Sea, they have to come face to face with their enemy. And their enemy is strong and they are weak. But you know what? God is stronger. In Exodus chapter 14, we read about the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh, and he realizes that the people have gone, the Israelite slaves, and he thinks, what have I done? We have let the Israelites go and we've lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and he took his army with him. He took like 600 chariots with him. Along with those chariots, he took his officers and all of them had hardened hearts and they went in pursuit of the Israelites. And they were marching out boldly, and man, they were heading right down towards those, those uh, Israelites, and the Egyptians were hot on their tail, and they were terrified. The Egyptians, or not the Egyptians, the Israelites were ter terrified. But you know, first, in order to be free, you need to come to the truth of one thing. You need to come to the truth that the enemy does not want to let you go. That's exactly what Pharaoh did. At this point in the story, things have gone uh, not so well for Pharaoh. The ten plagues have rocked his nation. His firstborn son is dead, and now he's just lost all those slaves, and he thinks, I've got to go get them. And if he had any sanity at all, he would have called it quits, but, you know, evil, narcissistic, power-hungry people are often intentional on doing things regardless. And so he hears that the people of Israel have actually fled from his country. And he says to himself, and he says to his leaders, let's go get them back. 
So he takes 600 chosen chariots. I mean, I'm talking about the real legit ones, you know, like stealth bomber kind of chariots. And they all go out in pursuit of the people of Israel, the whole army. And his military arm advisors, you think if they had had a half a brain would have said, man, this is not something we can win, but they remain quiet. But this is the exact insanity of evil of our enemy. They are defeated, but yet they think they can still win. This is why we can't be complacent Christians because we have to be on guard. In 1 Peter 5.8, it says, Be watchful for your adversary, like a lion, goes around looking for someone to devour. So are you being watchful? Do you know the strategies of the enemy? Do you know where he knows where to get you? You should be able to identify the unique ways that he tempts you. It is in stress and exhaustion or boredom or loneliness or in pride or in accomplishments. Maybe it's at school, maybe it's at home, maybe it's when you're driving your car, maybe when you're all alone. But when does the enemy come after you? You must be watchful because he does not want to let you go. The second thing we need to understand in order to be free, we need to come to the second truth, and that is God fights for you. The Israelites, you know, had their, their backs against the wall. They were cut off by the Red Sea, and they're terrified. And they are terrified as they look upon the enemy. And then they complain because they are under a false assumptions that following God out of slavery is going to be easy. It's not. And you know, we make the same mistake every time we assume that following Jesus will be easy. Jesus never promised us that. Never. But in Exodus, God gives us a true promise that the Lord will fight for you and you only have to be silent. You only have to trust him. Be still and know. Imagine Israel is standing with the sea on one side and Pharaoh on the other and they're trapped, but God has provided a way. This is one of the greatest pictures in the Bible of what Jesus does for us. We are trapped in sin, totally helpless, but Christ moves with his power and his position and he gives us hope. This is the gospel. This is the battle that we face every day and we don't fight alone. Jesus fights for you and the victory of the resurrection helps us to know that. Now this doesn't mean you won't sin. This does mean, it doesn't mean also you won't struggle. But Christ simply gives us the hope that we Things may seem overwhelming, but remember which side of the pillar you are on, which side of, of the water you're on and the enemy, Christ stands between us. You're not fighting alone. The Lord fights for you. Now, thirdly, to be free, you need to come to the truth that God will free and save you. God opened that water for the Israelites. God opened that way for them to go. And as Christians, as Christians we know it the moments to overcome in our life, Christ can make that possible. There's times when we feel like we're not going to make it. Sin will overpower us. But what we learn in the end of the story is magnificent, that the Lord saved Israel and his people. He saw the Egyptians and he helped them to be victorious over them, the Israelites. We all live with eternity in our heart, with the hope and the promise. And you know what? In heaven, there will be no longer anyone who will accuse us. The throne of God and the Lamb of God will help us to see that we have been forgiven and redeemed. Even though we struggle with sin and temptation every day, in the end, Jesus gives us victory because it is his blood that saves us. But exactly what does that God got to do with Israel? Well, you know what got Israel across to the other side? It was faith. In Hebrews 11, we read that it was by faith that God brought the Israelites to the other side. And that's what it comes down to, faith. The Israelites believed in the Lord. What about you? Do you believe in the Lord? Do you have faith in Jesus Christ? The question I asked at the beginning, what tree are you living under? You see, Jesus doesn't want us to live in the ruins of our sin. He doesn't want us to stay in that garden where, where things went bad. He warned Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but Eve and Adam both 
were deceived and ate from it. But God also reminds us that he has provided a second tree, and that is the cross. The tree of the cross, the tree of Jesus that Jesus used to restore what Satan has brought to ruin, on that cross, Jesus restored all things. And I pray that today you will trust in Jesus' power to set you free. So which tree do you live under? Is it the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or the tree of the cross? You see, the first tree brought death and destruction, but the second tree, the cross, brings life and freedom. We cannot know freedom until we're able to be okay without all the things we desire. Amen and amen. Let us pray the way Jesus has taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Thank you once again for stopping by today. Want to remind you, in-person worship on Sundays, 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. We have fellowship time between the two services, so we invite you to come enjoy some goodies and coffee and cakes and other delicious things like that. We <laughs> invite you to come and spend some time uh, reacquainting yourself with some folks you might not have seen for a while. Everyone is welcome. We provide a safe and comfortable environment for you and for your family. Sunday school is at 9 a.m. for pre-K all the way through senior high school. So we invite your young folks to come and be a part of that. That's at 9 a.m. during the worship time. Don't forget Holy Week on uh, April 14th. We will have Monday Thursday service. That's at 7 o'clock right here at the Elmwood United Methodist Church. A special time of communion, a special message, very simple service. And I uh, invite you to come to that. On Good Friday, April 15th, I invite you to come and experience. Now, we're going to have multiple opportunities. We're going to have sign-ups for that. If you want to sign up for that, you need to call the church office or stop in and sign up. 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 7 o'clock. 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 7 o'clock. And, uh, you know, we're gonna, it's, it's going to be something really unique. I don't want to spoil it. It's called Journey to the Cross, and I want you to come and experience. Now, there will be some walking involved during that time, so don't, don't panic. You know, if you're having trouble walking a little ways, we'll help you with that. You know, we'll make that arrangement to, to get you through this. But it's something for families that they can come and enjoy. And then once you experience, you're welcome to exit, and, and uh, it's all good. But I want to invite you to come and experience that on Good Friday. Don't forget Easter Sunday morning, one service, 9 a.m. One Easter Sunday morning service, 9 a.m. I want to invite you to come and be, that, be a part of that. We have Easter lilies. If you want to buy an Easter lily in a memory or honor or just for yourself, uh, we have those available. Call the church office. We'll be taking orders this next week. Uh, next Sunday also, but if you want one of those, call the church office. You need to get that order in before uh, April uh, 10th. You need to get it in by April 10th, so please do so. Other than that, thanks for being here. That's a whole lot of information there at the end. I'm glad you stuck it, stuck it out with me, and I'm so glad you come back each week. And uh, I'm just honored to bring you these videos. All right, God bless. Take care. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace. Amen and amen. Bye-bye.